Good evening, it's Deborah Irene coming to you today with story time. We've been reading stories from my mother's book, Helen's Heritage. We've been reading about her siblings. She was the youngest of 16, and she wanted everybody to know what a wonderful family she came from. So we've been taking a little bit of time each week to read about her 15 siblings and then herself as well. The last time that we told a story, we actually told my read the, a little bit about my mother, Helen Herbert Gillum, because it was the one year anniversary of her passing. So today we're gonna pick up and we are going to read about the third child born to Bernard and Mag Herbert and it was a boy. His name was Marvin John, and we all called him Uncle Marv. So before we get started, let me show you this picture that we have in the book about him. That is uh, his wife, Wanda. The picture here, of course, is their uh, later years, a few years before they passed away. And then the other picture is one of their family. They had a son and a daughter and in their younger years. So let's read about them. Marv Herbert. Marvin John, known to all as Marv, was born on November 17, 1907. The second son and father figure to all of us. He looked out after the family. He married Wanda McCurdy on December 26, 1937. They had two children, Margaret Irene, and we all called her Irene, and Jarvis Dean, whom we all called Bub, and lived a busy, full life. They had fish fry gatherings and music parties at their Civil War era home on their farm. He loved music, but couldn't play an instrument, so invited others to provide entertainment. Among other things, they had a dairy farm operation and many acres. My girls loved to play the Big Valley and Bonanza whenever we visited, and I can attest to that. Uh, it was primarily me and my sister Kathy because we used brooms as our stick horses and we would ride all over their property on those stick horses. My youngest sister was just a little toddler at the time, so she was too young to participate in those adventures. And my older sister, Vicki, was just enough older that she wanted to be with the teenagers and do those things. It was really fun after living in Southern California and to come back and have a farm like that to play on was really special to us. Everyone listened to him, took his advice, and followed what he suggested. If I ever needed advice, he was the one I was comfortable asking. When Mama was in the hospital just before she died, he said, when Helen gets here, I want to talk to her about Mama's condition. I couldn't believe that he wanted to ask my opinion, but he knew I had worked with the elderly in California and might have an idea if Mama would get better. My big brother respected my opinion. When I arrived, he and Irene were there and he quizzed, Sis, what do you think? Will she recover? I didn't know and said I wasn't sure. Sometimes patients recover with her symptoms and sometimes they don't. Irene cried. When I prepared for our move from Arkansas to Missouri in 1967, he suggested I bring what I could in the pickup in various loads over the weekends and store it in their milk barn building until I found a house to rent. I could always depend on Marv to help and offer practical advice. He rarely showed emotion. 
he kept his emotions in check and was stable in all situations. The entire family could always depend on him. One September, after moving to Missouri, Charles and I had an anniversary picnic while chopping wood for the upcoming winter on his property. It was a fun afternoon and Marv was glad to help us. These days, I see Marv and his grandson, David, his mannerisms and actions. I believe David's helpfulness came from his grandpa. I feel close with him today. David helped me with my house when I moved to Kansas City. Marv and Wanda had to sell their farm as they aged, and neither one was well enough to care for each other their last few years. Wanda died first in 1984. Marv was in a coma for two months before he died. When he came out of the coma, he thought it was still December instead of February. Bub called me and said he was not doing well and was not going to last long. When Geneva and I arrived at the nursing home, he was sitting in a chair. Bub told us that he wasn't responding and that the staff thought he was dying. I put my arms around him, kissed him, and prayed, Jesus, take care of him. He raised his arms as I prayed, and then he died. It was May 20, 1986. He was 78 years old. And as she stated earlier, their children were Margaret Irene, born in 1938, and Jarvis Dean, whom we all called Bub, in 1941. And Bub is mentioned a few times in other stories in my mother's book, Helen's Heritage. I would just like to add here a little story of my own. When we left California and moved back here, we were, I sometimes call us, my sisters and I, city slickers, because we weren't used to living on a farm. And uh, I remember uh, at Aunt Lizzie and Uncle Hikes, and I've, I've read stories about them, they had this one cow. And when we first came back here, I could not drink the milk. It was kind of bitter tasting. I didn't understand that sometimes when a cow would eat the wrong thing, it could affect the milk. So I was not much on trying this milk that was not bought in a store. And then I went over to Uncle Marv and Aunt Wanda's house. and They had a huge milking operation. And I used to really enjoy watching them go get all these cows and line them up in the barn. And then they had the automatic machines where you milked them. And their milk tasted really good. But my mother told me it was because the other cow at my Aunt Lizzie's had eaten something bitter. And that's why the milk was not as good. But I was so impressed with my Uncle Marv and my Aunt Wanda. They were good people and they worked hard, and they had this old Civil War era home, as my mother mentioned, but oh, they opened the home up and had these big fish fries, as mom mentioned, and the music parties, and they loved to entertain. I remember Aunt Wanda wrote many articles for the paper when the family would all get together at their house and tell who was present. She wrote many obituaries as well for our family. And when we moved to Arkansas, when we left California, and my mother had to have an ear surgery, she came down and watched us during the time that my mother was not well. So I have very, very good memories of my Uncle Marv and my Aunt Wanda. One time, my Uncle Marv took me on a stroll, and I don't even remember why. He may have been looking for a lost cow. That might have been what we were doing. And he was just such a gentleman and just answered any questions I had and just was so, so patient. He was a good man. And that was my Uncle Marv. And I know my mother thought so much of him and it was a big loss to her when he passed away. So this is Deborah Irene and we have read a story today about 
one of my mother's older brothers, the third child, Marvin John. Join me next time and we'll read about one of her other siblings. It's Deborah Irene with Storytime.